Street Guitar Showcase, NAMM Show 2019. The Street Guitar Showcase is a NAMM initiative meant to meet the needs of the small handcrafted guitar makers. In this space, we like to show the interesting things that are happening with guitar makers today. Much of what people know is about the innovations of yesteryear, from 1937, from the 1957 or 1985, that became very successful and shaped the course of music history. But the guitar, from the very beginning, has continued to evolve and continues to evolve today. But most people don't see these changes in their regular lives. And so you're about to see what some of the most amazing guitar makers on the planet are doing today. If we can find our way through the people, that is. So follow me. We have a piece here by Michael Spalt from Vienna, Austria. These art installations on the ends are meant to show guitar as an icon of contemporary culture that has exceeded the bounds of its utility. The guitar has become so much more than something you just play music on. It's an icon that we use in advertising to convey an image. Everybody in the Western world has a feeling about the guitar that we don't necessarily have a feeling about, let's say, the oboe or the French horn, but we all associate with the guitar. And so these uh, objects on the end are amazing guitars that are larger than the guitar itself. On the other side, we have one from Peter Malinas. Another fantastic luthier who's thinking outside of what tradition is here. Next on our tour will be Isaac Jang. Isaac Jang, a uh, Korean-born American who is making amazing acoustic guitars, absolutely of the finest in the world. Uh, Isaac has his own particular style and craft, second to none in what he does. He's one of the hottest, younger luthiers in the market today. Uh, you can find his work all over the world because it really is truly something special. On the other side here, we have Pete Malinowski. Fantastic images. Pete refuses to repeat himself, always pushing the limits as to what we will accept as a guitar. Fantastic work, very inspiring. Thrilled to have Pete here at the show. Noah Guitars, from Milano, Italy. Noah are making uh, all aluminum body guitars with wooden necks. Really the warmest guitars I've ever played with a metal body. Uh, interestingly, Noah is not a traditional guitar company, they are an architectural company. This is an architectural project and fantastic guitars. I love these instruments. On the other side, we have Daniel Memory with Oni Guitars from Australia. Daniel is working with all sorts of different ideas. He's making a, uh, an ergonomic style guitar that is convex one side of, and contoured on the other side in the same way. Take a look at the fret work. He's doing a multi-scale where he's actually applying a curvature to the frets as opposed to a straight line. He had a customer ask him if he could get over the problem that he had with forming a particular chord within a traditional multi-scale. And Daniel had the idea to add a, uh, a radius curve to them, which uh, seems to have solved the problem. Really fantastic work, great eye for design, top quality. Directly behind us, we have Skytop guitars. Skytop, American guitar maker, where these acoustic guitars are focused on projecting the sound towards the player. Interestingly, most acoustic guitars project the sound forward away from the person who's actually playing it. Whereas in this case, if you enjoy sitting and playing for yourself and enjoying making your own music, this is a total immersion experience, really has to be experienced because it's, it's almost disorienting how much sound is coming towards you as the player and how full it is. A uh, totally new experience in the acoustic guitar. On the other side, if we can see past here, we have Michael Spalt. Again, who had one of the art installations on the outside. Michael makes incredible guitars as a great assemblage artist. Oh, the person we did not know. 
with all of the... Michael finds wonderful objects around the world, places them in the guitars, the acoustic resin. Everything is a unique piece. Uh, fantastic, wonderful playing, sounding instruments. They have a very unique sound to them because of the resin that he uses, his bone top pickups. Really, really wonderful instruments. Behind him, we have Meladuende guitars from France. Meladuende has a great sort of industrial uh, look to them. They're always using uh, metal with the bodies, uh, a very sort of uh, well-worn and played finish, a great aesthetic happening here. Wonderful instruments. Beside them, we have Varsul from Helsinki, Finland. Um, really unique aesthetic. Uh, Tar from Varsul definitely has his own language of design. Uh, great playing pieces. Many of the uh, most iconic guitar players in the world, that people like Ronnie Wood and Billy Gibbons can be seen using his guitars at most of their shows. Really actively played instruments. On the other side, we have Frank Hartung from Germany. Frank is known for his fantastic quality of work and his strong relief carves in his designs. A very clear visual identity and a quality of guitar that is second to none. Across from him, we have Dion Guitars from Canada. Uh, Dion is making a very understated design. He's a mastery of line. Very few uh, adornments happening with these instruments but he really controls the line of the headstock, of the body, and makes a very strong statement with very little. I, I might think of uh, Constantine Brancusi famously once said that complexity, or simplicity, I'm sorry, <laughs> is complexity resolved. And in this case, Dion has really resolved what can be very complex in the very clean, simple lines that is a bold statement. Across from him, we have Juha Rokangas from Finland. Juha, uh, a master luthier, that is really making absolutely top quality instruments in pursuit of the perfect guitar. Uh, he loves using finished woods. So that flaming you're seeing is, is a Finnish uh, birch in this particular case. Uh, we have Spanish cedar, is very commonly used with him. One of the first guys to be torrifying woods. Spends a crazy amount of time on his fretwork. Everything is absolutely looking just perfect. One of the things that Juha has pioneered here at the show is a guitar that has a tube-driven pickup in it, which is something that needs to be seen as well. Beside him, we have Adam Ovik. Adam Ovik from uh, the Netherlands, just outside of Amsterdam. Uh, wonderful bass maker who is making ergonomic basses that are not disorienting. Often ergonomic designs are so far from what we're used to, it sometimes leaves the player isolated. If I didn't tell you this was an ergonomic design, you probably wouldn't know. He's just shifted everything a little bit in the direction to make things more comfortable. He consulted with a physiotherapist where he's from, and they're amazing playing, sound and feeling instruments. Across from him, we have AC guitars and Reaver guitars. Both brands are made uh, by the same guitar maker, Alan Kringen, in Scotland. Uh, he is making wonderful instruments, top quality designs, uh, he does a fantastic um, pre-amplifier in his bass that allows you to dial in all sorts of tones that you cannot get out of most instruments. Uh, his electric guitars have clean lines, a fantastic feel and finish, fit and performance, second to none. I love Alan's work. Behind him we have Stephen McSwain from Portland, Oregon. These guitars have a very sort of industrial Americana uh, rock and roll image. And Steven's work embodies everything that is iconic about rock and roll and Americana into his instruments. He built instruments for all sorts of uh, famous guitar players uh, over the years. He's been hired to do his artwork by famous guitar companies like Warrior and Schechter and such have hired him to make NAM showpieces for them. Fantastic rock and roll machine. Behind him, we have Glenn Maxwell from New Zealand and the Infinitum guitar. This is a, a totally new approach to uh, the arch top guitar. We have very little bracing in here. We have two arced carbon fiber rods where the strings are attached to, so there's no actual string tension directly on the top, but just the downward pressure of the piece there. You'll see the carving all from solid woods, a very understated aesthetic. It's about his native woods and beautiful lines in this case. Across from him, we have turnstone guitars. 
Turnstone Guitars are from England. Uh, Rosie Haydenrich is doing a fantastic job with her with her instruments. Absolute top quality. Loves to often build with English woods. You'll see in this particular piece that she's taken a multi-scale fretboard and extended those lines on through the rosette and the headstock. Love that approach. If you ever get uh, have a chance to experience a, a turntable guitar, you also need to take a look in the inside. It has quite a different approach. I'm not sure you get that with your camera right now, but wonderful, wonderful instruments from a, a great builder in England. <laughs> Behind us, we have Rainer Tausch with Tausch Instruments in Germany. Hey, these instruments here, uh, top quality boutique guitars that are always a little different than you think they are. We look at this and we think, oh, I know what that is. No, this instrument has a chamber pairwood body. It has a set neck. When we have a tremolo, we have a how ferro block in here, a flamenco scale length. These instruments are fantastic playing machines made to the absolute top quality. Behind us, we have red layer guitars from Amsterdam, Netherlands. Uh, Jort is doing an incredible job with design. He's a CNC master, teaches it. Um, he came to guitar after being a master already of this uh, technology and carving. You'll see, uh, it's almost hard to explain, the video is better. <laughs> Amazing instruments, all sorts of different options. What you're seeing here is that we've carved into tiny cubes and almost being sucked into a black hole in the center. This one here is features a bismuth crystal, which is a chemical reaction that happens when you mix a couple of materials together, pour it in hot, and then crystallizes in the shape already there. So on the other side, if we can come maybe through this way, we have Giulio Negrini. Giulio is an Italian-born guitar maker who's living just outside of Geneva, who has made masterful modern guitars. Giulio is a uh, really in the pursuit of perfection here with his instruments. He uses often really beautiful Italian poplar. If you're wondering where that sort of flaming is coming from that you may have never seen before, Italian poplar flames in a way that maple does not or that birch does not. Um, he's a great inlay artist. This particular one is dealing with uh, the Neptune. Look at the colors. He's a master of blending colors. Absolutely perfect, wonderful work. Behind him we have Strati from Poland. This is a wonderful modern bass maker that obviously references classic design. Uh, very minimal but yet striking in his use of color and line. Great quality instruments that are not quite like any other bass that I've seen before in the marketplace. Behind him we have the icon, Steve Klein. Steve is one of the very first boutique guitar makers who stepped outside the line, and Steve Kaufman as well. So Steve Kaufman and Klein are making uh, the guitars here that we see. The acoustic guitars are made by Steve Kaufman in an absolutely master way. Uh, the, the design from here is a Steve Klein design from the early 1970s. Um, according to Steve Klein, Steve Kaufman makes a better Klein guitar than he ever did. On the right side, we have uh, the Steli here, which is a, uh, a first ergonomic guitar design that I was ever aware of from the early 80s. This guitar design is actually, the shape has almost nothing to do with the aesthetics. It's where it meets your leg, it's where the arm fits in, and the neck is coming off of the body at a 35 degree angle. We view guitars always vertically and horizontally, but we don't actually play them in this position. This guitar is actually set with the neck at a 35 degree angle in playing position, which actually you can see there's a gentleman sitting here with one, you'll see the neck is coming off at a straight angle. So, on the other side, we have lame horse instruments from both Dallas and Austin. How is that possible? Father and son. They're, they're making them in Dallas and in Austin, Texas. Incredible uh, quality of work. Lots of innovations. They have an adjustable neck angle here with their own sort of patented feature. They have uh, adjustable components here where the armrest actually is attached with a magnet and can come right off and easily go right back on. Uh, fantastic aesthetics, extremely Texan. What you can't see very well, maybe you can see the pictures in the back wall, is they spend as much time on the inside as they do the out. You'll see there's beautiful aesthetics happening on the insides of their guitars. Uh, lame horse instruments, fantastic piece. On the other side here, we have Teufel guitars from Germany. We have a Teufel, one of the masters of design, an icon within the industry, 
Uh, three of his designs here, we had the Birdfish, the Antonio, and the Niwa. Currently you're seeing the Antonio, which references the earliest days of Luthery, uh, from Antonio Stradivari and Antonio uh, Torres. Interestingly enough, both the violin and the guitar started with people named Antonio. Uh, obviously it's not a violin, obviously it's not a Torres guitar, but you can see references to both of their work within this instrument. Beside it, the Niwa, which is meant to, uh, is the Japanese word for garden, a very organic design. This happens to be the very first uh, high gloss uh, Niwa ever made. They've always been a, a sort of a matte finish, interesting colors. And beside it, the iconic, his very first uh, famous design, uh, the Birdfish. A guitar that, um, if you can understand the Birdfish, you will understand all guitars. It is a form follows function design. It is no more and no less than what it must be. It is an incredible instrument. Beside him, we have Avi Shabbat. Avi is a guitar maker born in Israel who is living in California for a number of years now. He makes fantastic playing machines. They look like, like classic American factory guitars, but they are absolutely great playing instruments every time. Removes the randomness and of course can do any sort of uh, customization that you'd like. Avi Shabbat making fantastic instruments. Behind him, we have Donald McGreevy from Ireland. Donald's making a fantastic acoustic guitar. Uh, he uses a, a laminate inside to make it thicker here to get more movement from the top and back. Really rich, really warm sound. The finish is super soft and clean. Uh, I love the feel underneath the hand of these particular instruments. Uh, he's making a guitar of a quality that really is second to none. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about the future for Donald McGreevy. Behind him, we have Scott Walker. Scott Walker, an American guitar maker from Santa Cruz, California. Uh, Scott is uh, well known for his scroll work, as you'll see on the head, uh, the horns there. Um, and just top quality instruments. Uh, I love the work that he's doing here. This particular set of instruments is a bit unusual for him as it was in collaboration with Wilcut Guitars out of the USA who wanted guitars that sort of referenced the early guitars that much of the Grateful Dead did. Uh, and of course, Scott is from that part of California as well. Scott's a great slide player and makes some really cool lap steels uh, as well. So it's great to have a lap steel here at the Boutique Guitar Showcase. Directly behind you, we have OJ Guitars with Oliver Jaggi. Uh, this is a fascinating approach to the acoustic bass, something that has a great deal of uh, discussion about as no one seems to have really landed on exactly what we want of the acoustic bass. So Oliver is, is pursuing uh, making really a great performance acoustic bass here. You'll notice there's a lot of surface for the instruments. Uh, it has a Manzer inspired wedge within it, multi-scale frets in this particular piece. Uh, and if you wonder about transportation, he's put in a genius part in here where the neck actually can come off very easily and go back on for such a large instrument. He's thought of it all. So here we have Megan Wells. Megan's from California. And, well, she's born in Michigan actually, but she's living in California. She studied under Brian Gallup. She apprenticed with uh, Tom Rebecca. She's a fantastic pedigree. She does absolutely amazing work. She's one of the top guitar makers that people are talking about these days with her arch tops. Uh, of course, it references classic American arch tops. And Megan is really trying to make a guitar that is great for anybody that's not just a jazz instrument. So absolutely love her work and her infectious personality comes out. She pours love into everything she does. Beside it, we have a mandolin because this is Megan Wells guitars and mandolins. Makes a fantastic instrument. This one sold right away in the first day. It's a great piece. Um, pay attention to what's happening with Megan Wells because we're going to be hearing a lot more of her name in the future. On this side, we have an art installation by Enrico Di Donato from Venice, Italy. Another one of the art installations is supposed to show guitar as an icon of contemporary culture that exceeded the balance of its utility. This particular piece sold during the VIP preview before the NAMM show even officially opened up, about a half an hour before the show even started. Um, this piece entitled Heaven and Hell, Selfishness, Envy and Repudiation of Diversity on Wood. Across from this, we have an art installation by Michael Sankey titled When I Fell, I Sang. Michael has taken a Klein-inspired ergonomic style guitar with multi-scale frets, very minimalistic in its approach, 
cut it from a single slab, then that slab of wood becomes the display piece. What you'll notice here is there's a small knob in the bottom there. It is for the volume because he's actually managed to convert this slab of wood into the amplifier itself. There are no speakers. He has thinned this panel of the wood down to 130 thousandths of an inch like he would an acoustic guitar top and put some exciters in it and a Class D digital power amplifier. You can see it from behind there, both the reflection and if you get in behind it at all there, you will see uh, the amazing sort of innovation and creativity that's happening with this piece. Incredible. Um, behind him, we have Polyakov Guitar from Berlin, Germany. Polyakov Guitars are doing a fantastic approach to what they're doing, something we've never seen before, where they're doing some chip artwork. It's actually using texture as opposed to a lot of additional peripheries. You'll notice the headstock has been chipped in particular directions. Very detailed work, which you can't fix if you do it wrong. <laughs> you have to do this right the first time. You'll see in the mirror, even the tail wedge is done in this particular uh, style. Really incredible approach to the instrument. You'll see that the top uh, is also slanted down. The neck is sitting a little bit above it. The fretboard is here on a particular angle. You can access frets. A number of things to check out with these guitars. If you ever have a chance to come in contact with Polyakov guitar, it'll be a wonderful experience. Beside him, we have Podaka guitars from Russia. Amazing modern guitars, very interesting curves, very interesting lines, lots of layers of wood revealing the different aesthetic features of it. We have multi scale instruments, headless instruments here, active pre bass. I mean, he's really engaged the modern instrument and has taken on a very clear and distinctive style to everything that he's doing here. Beside that, we have Michael Sankey's guitars. Michael Sankey, who did the art installation on the outside. Uh, as you can see, all very organic approach to what he does. Michael, very commonly, he's working on his guitar and carving it and picking it up, holding it against his body, carving some more, picking it up, holding it, making sure it's a very pleasant experience for the guitar maker. Uh, this particular piece here called Breaking Wave is a, a modern approach to an arch top. As you can see, the sound holes are up by the neck. The bridge piece here, the tail piece, is actually designed by Michael in AutoCAD and then sent off for 3D printing and comes back to him as a printed piece. It's not cast, it's printed that way. Fantastic uh, embracement of modern culture. Uh, behind him, we have Gallup guitars from Michigan. Brian Gallup is one of the uh, great guitar makers in their history, one of the masters. I mean, Michael Greenfield came out of his school, Megan Wells came out of his school, Isaac Jang came out of his school. Uh, Michael is truly iconic in the industry. This particular piece that we're looking at is a wonderful uh, Wenge instrument with all sorts of uh, different uh, inlays and design in it. The, what you're seeing that he's, the gentleman is sitting upon here is a chair that was made for Art Basel, designed Miami this year. Uh, where the chair, the back, the glass, the etching, the Brazilian rosewood guitar that sits in there, all lines up together from the back to complete the image. Uh, what you can't see right now is that there's a secret compartment in the base of the chair that is holding a very nice bottle of wine and a glass to make it a really great playing experience. Here we have Ergon guitars from Lisboa, Portugal. Adriano Sergio is making a guitar that is really quite unique in the world. No one is really approaching this carving. When I think about Adriano's guitars, uh, in, a, in a fantastical way, it makes you wonder if Adrian can sing the tree from the earth and find its voice. Other interesting facts about Adriano is he's on the cover of Premier Guitar Magazine this month, uh, featuring his life story. This man has been uh, the equivalent to a Navy SEAL in the Portuguese Army and a touring tech for many of the most famous metal bands in the world. As a, uh, as a jazz bass player coming out of university, he had never really listened to metal before, but all of a sudden he was on the road with bands like Dio and Anthrax. And fascinating, fascinating character. Really, really acoustic sounding, clear, very organic. Beside him, we have OD Guitars from Israel. Omer Deutsch is uh, a industrial designer by trade. As you can see, the geometric sort of designs, the inlay and the fretboard, uh, all of this is uh, well, first of all, geometry is uh, iconic in all of the artwork that comes actually from this part of the world. In the, in the sort of Arab Middle Eastern part, uh, there's lots of sort of tiles and mosaics and it's found its way into his work. Uh, and the way he's approaching it is, uh, well, frankly, this type of work just wasn't possible uh, only a few years ago. 
Right behind him, we have Douglas Cower, Cower Guitars in the Cower Nation. <laughs> Here we have uh, a number of Doug's pieces, which are fantastic American instruments. And I say American not because he is literally born and, uh, and produces in America, but I mean, there's a feel to the classic American guitars that, that Doug really has nailed here. This is that classic American feel, his own take on it, often drawing from uh, automobile palettes and classic American history. Doug makes a great straight up player's guitar with all sorts of interesting feature. Beside him, we have Berenick guitars. Berenick is from uh, the Oregon area, outside of Portland. Uh, we have some wonderful instruments here. As you can see, we have some sort of Jetsonian uh, mid-modern designs happening in his electric guitars. All customized features, customized pick guards, custom pickups. You know, to go through the work and, and achieve this and not just buying the parts off the shelf, this is what we're talking about with a guitar maker where it's not about slapping parts together, it's about really holding that vision. You'll see a wonderful parlor instrument here, which again, holding that sort of mid-modern uh, stylings with it, with the use of the tortoiseshell-esque material. Uh, really wonderful lines, great playing instruments. Mike Baranek, uh, we're thrilled to have him here in the Boutique Guitar Showcase this year. Behind Mike, we have Gunnar Orn, Iceland's only luthier. Fantastically Viking in all of his styles, he's embraced it. You'll see his bridges here are Molnar Thor's hammer. You're seeing uh, Odin's shield, which is a symbol of health and vitality within Iceland. Uh, some of these guitars have been dipped in volcanic mud. I uh, really just wonderful pieces, great rock and roll machines. And uh, I mean, what a fantastic time to be a guitar maker who does this when there's so much popularity right now about Norse mythology uh, in Hollywood right now. Um, ah, wonderful combination. Beside him, we have Marconi Lab from Italy. Uh, these guitars here are a new way of approaching the instrument where you can customize most details of the instrument, where you could remove this control cavity if there's too much happening at the piezo and put on the control cavity like the one beside it. Something completely different, or a different neck profile. Or if you don't want an armrest, you can put on something without that same type of armrest. <laughs> a really wonderful modular instruments. They've designed their own tremolo system, which you shouldn't miss. They have a leveling glass in. Uh, they've designed their own uh, special sort of pickup that's happening just off of the, uh, the neck on this particular piece here. The one that you're seeing right now has a sort of a space cargo ship effect on it. Really wonderful, interesting pieces. Behind him, we have Soul Tool guitars from Switzerland. Soul Tool is classically Swiss. We have very clean, minimalist designs with this, made to the highest quality. These are great instruments that you could play with any style. If you're looking to have a more traditional functioning instrument, that has its own style and personality because you don't want to look like everyone else, this is a fantastic option for you. Beside him, we have Alejandro Ramirez of O3 Guitars. These instruments here, uh, one of the things that I find most fascinating about Alejandro is his location. He's from Almeria, Spain, which is where Antonio Torres is from, the father of the modern guitar. Uh, in this 150 years-ish time since Antonio Torres, Look at what has happened to the guitar. I mean, these look nothing like the Torres design, but here we are in the same village making wonderful modern guitars, great clean curves, great lines. I love his reveals, the way he does on the outside edges here. Uh, all of his instruments, or most of them anyways, feature such reveals of layered wood happening. Great playing, wonderful instruments that have their own style. And isn't it great to sort of see what's happened to the guitar within this same little village over all these years. Beside him, we have uh, Ouroboros Guitars from Berlin. They're doing a number of innovative things as far as the structure is concerned. As you can see, here we've focused the bass response by having something that's going deeper in it. The back of this instrument uh, is also has a separate sort of floating back, the tone wood on the inside, that you, can come, that you don't come in contact with here. Um, we have a lot of aesthetic features on this particular piece. Very interesting inlay work. The headstock, sort of two sort of different ideas happening here, a classic slotted and the more modern sort of peg head. Uh, to the right side here, we have classic sci-fi built into an acoustic guitar. I mean, acoustic guitars which often really hold on to tradition with <laughs> alien space monsters, classic sci-fi features. I mean, really, uh, I love the courage and the ideas 
that happened with here. Beside him, we have the guitars from Enrico Di Donato from Venice, who we saw earlier on with one of the art installations. Enrico is making a fascinating guitar that is basically a floating art shop. This instrument has an aluminum frame in behind it that every component of the guitar is mounted to. The pickups, the control cavities, well, there is no control cavity, the electronics are, are there, the neck, every bit of it is mounted to the aluminum frame except the wooden top. So the only thing that's coming in contact with the wooden top is actually the bridge, just downward pressure. Really wonderful design, incredible sustain, very clean, very dynamic, wonderful instruments from Rico Tignato. That wraps up what we brought here for this year's Boutique Guitar Showcase 2019 at the NAMM Show. We hope to see you again next year.